Last week against the Kansas Jayhawks, the CU Buffs came back to life. Today, the regular season comes to a close. Fifteen seniors will bid farewell to the Folsom Field faithful. Colorado is in the running for a major bowl clash. Rashan Salam's in the running for the Heisman Trophy. Iowa State stands in the way. It's the Buffs and the Cyclones. The kickoff's coming up. Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the Iowa State University Cyclones versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. And welcome to a very dry Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. We feared the worst when it came to the weather, but we got what looks like the best. Hi, everybody. I'm Les Shapiro, along with Dave Logan. And boy, Dave, we really caught a break today, didn't we? Well, I, I think when you take into consideration this is November 19th, plus it was forecasted that we have a near blizzard here this afternoon. You look out, it is dry. It's a beautiful, sunny afternoon. This is about as good as it gets. One young man very thankful that this field will be dry today is the young man running for the Heisman Trophy. See you running back, Rashan Salam. I think not only is Salam happy, but Bill McCartney is happy as well because now you can really get the football to Salam, not worried about the weather conditions. He leads the nation in rushing, in scoring, and in all-purpose yardage. He's 204 yards away from the 2,000-yard mark, which would put him in a class where only three other NCAA Division I runners have achieved. And those three guys all went on to win the Heisman Trophy. So a big day, maybe, for a shot. And we'll try and keep you apprised of every yard Salon picks up as the day progresses. Now, this is the final home game, the final game at Folsom for 15 CU seniors, and that includes a pretty good linebacker named Ted Johnson. I'll tell you what, it's been an outstanding class for uh, the University of Colorado. Ted Johnson is one of the three finalists for the Butkus Award, which signifies the outstanding linebacker in the country. He leads this team in tackles. He not only has had a great year this year, but Ted Johnson has been a terrific player throughout the course of his career. Now, on paper, it doesn't seem like the Iowa State Cyclones have a chance to win this game. They haven't won a game all year long, but they have a quarterback, a couple of quarterbacks actually were very dangerous including the starter Todd Doxson. Tell you what these two guys have given Colorado problems the last couple of years. Doxson and his backup Jeff Sinclair last year rushed for 193 yards combined. Those two guys alone so Todd Doxson is a capable uh, option quarterback and a guy that you're going to have to make sure you get the football out of his hands. Keep in mind, Iowa State comes in here without its head coach on the sideline. Jim Walden suspended from this game by the Big 8. Jim is in the stadium. We'll talk about him a little bit after kickoff. Buffs football on News 4 is brought to you by Pizza Hut, by United Airlines, by Miller Genuine Draft, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado, by your Front Range Jeep and Eagle dealers, by Midas, and by First Federal Bank. Gorgeous blue skies over Boulder, Colorado, and a very nice scene on the field also. We'll talk about that in one second after we tell you the particulars on the weather. It is 28 degrees here in Boulder. Humidity about 63% a bit damp. You could feel it going right through you when the wind kicks up. And the wind is at 10 miles an hour. The forecast partly cloudy. We're expecting that snow, but not until well after this ball game is over. 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Let's go down to the field now and talk more about that with Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You guys are talking about what kind of day it is. It is absolutely beautiful. There's actually some people in the stands here, shorts and T-shirts. We came expecting the worst, maybe expecting a foot of snow. Thought it might be like Iowa State back in 1991. Going to be sweating before the game is off. No snow down here, just along the sides of the field. Injury update for you. Kerry Hicks hurt two weeks ago against Oklahoma State. There's a slim chance, a slim chance that Kerry Hicks may play today. He's got a strained knee ligament in his left knee. Now, if he does play, he's going to play left 
defensive tackle so he can protect that left knee. It'll be on the outside. But in all likelihood, he probably won't play, but he might. You never know. Also, Michael Westbrook dislocated that finger last week against Kansas. Also, has got the foot sprain. He appears to be almost 100%. He will not be slowed down. Absolutely gorgeous day down here for football. Rashawn Salam, of course, 204 yards away from 2,000 yards. And talking to some of his teammates before the ball game, that is their focus. Obviously, Iowa State is the opponent, but the focus really is getting Rashawn Salam that 204 yards and that Heisman Trophy. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. The CU Buffs huddled at midfield and among that wave of black jerseys, 15 seniors playing their final game for the CU Buffaloes. Yes, so long to Blake Anderson, Norm Barnett, Tony Birdie, Ken Brown, tight end Christian Fourier. Darius Holland playing his last regular season game. Chris Hudson, Ted Johnson, Vance Joseph, John Knudsen. Along with Ron Meyer, Eric Mitchell, Cordell Stewart, Derek West, and Michael Westbrook. The series record between these two teams, CU with a dominant lead, 36 wins, 11 losses, and one tie. The Buffs have won the last 10 games, including last year in Ames, Iowa. But a struggle it was for the Buffs. They win by a small margin, 21 to 16. And Iowa State's two freshman quarterbacks, Todd Doxson and Jeff St. Clair, as Dave mentioned to you earlier, ran for 193 yards against the Buffs. Well, we also told you earlier that Iowa State head coach Jim Walden will not be coaching his team today. Let me take you back, a little historical perspective on what's gone on for the Cyclones and Jim Walden the last few weeks. Three weeks ago, Walden announced his resignation effective at the end of the year. The speculation is Walden was getting out of town one step ahead of the posse, that he would have been fired at the end of the season anyway. He is somewhere up in the press box, the radio booth for Iowa State. We'll try and get you a picture of him before the day is over. Two weeks ago, Walden criticized officials after his team's loss to Kansas State, and that's a conference no-no, publicly criticizing the officials. So the Big Eight suspended him one game, this game, his final game, at Iowa State. And the school was fined $5,000 for Walden's remarks, as some of the school says it will extract from Walden's paycheck, and he will be paid by the school through the year 1997. What you just saw were some of the Iowa State coaches on the sideline. Nobody has been designated the head coach in Walden's place today. They will be coaching by committee. And that's really not unusual. Uh, you'll, you'll have the, the defensive coordinator making all of the defensive calls, and, of course, the offensive guy and, and offensive coaches will involve themselves in the offensive game plan. And so that, that's, not, that's not really a surprise. It's too bad that Jim Walden can't finish his career at Iowa State on the sideline where he belongs. And I understand the conference has rules that they have to uphold, and yet you think with a guy that has stepped down and has really been a pretty good coach for Iowa State, despite the record, uh, it'd be much better if he could finish with, uh, with the headset on. Hey, he was allowed to coach his team during practice this week, but he cannot coach them during the game. On the other sideline, Bill McCartney. No problems for Bill this year unless you want to count that Nebraska game. Bill and, and the Buffs are 9-1. and one. He is the winningest coach in CU history. And he's playing hurt, David. He still has that soft cast on his wrist. He broke his wrist a couple of games ago when a player ran into him on the sidelines. Sidelines, a, a hazardous place to be when the action, when the man carrying the football comes out of, bound, out of bounds, he usually attracts a number of other big, strong bodies, and Bill just didn't get out of the way. No, he doesn't have the spring in the legs that he used to have. <laughs> he doesn't have the spring in the wrist either. <laughs> All right, we're getting ready for kickoff. The Buffs come in with a 9-1 and one record. They're 5-1 and one in conference. That's Todd Doxson, the starting quarterback for Iowa State. And the Cyclones still looking for their first win this year. They are 0-9-1 overall, the one tie with Oklahoma State. They are 0-5-1 in conference. Last week against the University of Nebraska, the top-ranked Cornhuskers, Doxson had a pretty decent game. He completed 8 of 13 passes for 151 yards. In fact, this Iowa State team uh, almost pulled off an upset. Well, they were close with Nebraska. It was 14 to 12 in the fourth quarter. And then when the Cornhuskers jumped in front 21 to 12, Iowa State had a long touchdown pass called back because of penalty. So even though, again, they we're not trying to make this game seem to be something that it's not, but this team without a win has played some decent football lately. Neil Voskarishian getting ready to kick off for the Buffs. 
Back to receive it for Iowa State, Kevin Fulton and Cedric Linwood. So the final regular season game for both squads. See you, of course, will go on to play in a bowl game. We'll talk about that later in the telecast. Iowa State will be going home and will stay home once this game is over. Here we go. That's Fulton from his own seven-yard line. And Robert Fulton, a return of about 20 yards, and Iowa State will start with the ball at its own 27. Of course, Todd Doxson, the name we told you, as the starting quarterback. The running backs are Jim Knott, Troy Davis, and Calvin Branch. The split ends are Mike Horacek and Ivory Moon. And the offensive line is led by all Big 8 candidate Tony Booth at the right guard. Iowa State comes in, scoring a little better than 17 points a game. Doxson on the keeper. Has some room around right end and run out of bounds for about a five-yard gain. Chris Hudson ran him out, and let's take a look at the rest of that CU defense that plays with Chris. On the line, Shannon Clavel. You have Ryan Olson filling in for the injured carry. Hicks and Darius Holland at the linebacker position. This is a great quartet so far this year. Mike Phillips, Greg Jones, Matt Russell, and Ted Johnson. And the DBs are Hudson, Simmons, Donnelly, Amidi, the man who leads the buffs and the conference in interceptions, Steve Rosga. He has four on the year. They call it a pickup of six for Doxson, so it's second and four. This time he runs the option left, and he is dragged down by Darius Holland. Well, we've talked about Todd Doxson. His nickname is the Gazelle. Very quick and very adept at running the option, but he's a quarterback that likes to keep the football. He doesn't like to pitch the ball too much, but a nice job here by Holland. He rides down the tackle, and then quick enough, even as big as he is, to pursue the option at the correct angle and strong enough just to pull Doxon down with one hand. A loss of two yards on that last play. Give Darius Holland the credit for it on the tackle, and it's third and six. the middle complete the receiver was the running back Calvin Branch Donnell Liamidi the stop but the one area of concern I think defensively for Colorado has been their pass defense and Iowa State not known as a great passing team but pretty good set decent pass protection Matt Russell a little bit late in the blitz and the first first down of the game Iowa State with the ball at its own 44. Calvin Branch, as you see, is the guy that when they do throw, they usually throw to him. The pitch goes to Branch. He fumbles but gets the nice bounce, picks it up, and goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Dave, how would you describe this offense. I mean, some people say it's a combination of the wishbone and the eye bone and, and the funny bone, I guess. I, I think it's an offense, again, that, that may be a little bit without identity. I don't know that they know exactly as to what they're trying to accomplish. They've got some pretty good athletes. Doxson is a very good option quarterback, and yet they'll mix in not only the, the eye bone, the wishbone, but they'll go to split backs, they'll go to pro formation, and they're, they're kind of a multiple multiple set offense. It makes it tough to prepare for them, doesn't it? Oh, you, you've got to spend some time because they have a lot of different sets that require different alignments by the defense. Second and seven for the Cyclones from their own 47. Doxon will keep across midfield and down to the CU 49-yard line before Ted Johnson makes the tackle. But Ted Johnson, as we told you at the top of the telecast, one of the three finalists for the Butkus Award, really had a great career. Dana Howard from Illinois and Ed Stewart from Nebraska, the other two. But you can see Johnson moving from right to left, but never leaving the middle part of the field. 
And with four more tackles today, Ted Johnson moves into second place on the all-time CU list behind only Greg Beekert. Beekert is not within Johnson's reach, by the way. Third and three from the CU 49. There's a bad pitch. Iowa State cannot fall on it. Greg Jones, the first one there. The ball's still loose, and it looks like the Buffs have it at the Iowa State 25. Well, you, talk, you talk about reasons a team has not been able to get that first win on the board. Iowa State has been plagued by turnovers the entire season. I think Ted Johnson may have come up with that fumble. The pitch forced a little bit too early. It looks like Colorado comes away with it easily here, but Greg Jones can't corral it. Neither can Dalton Simmons. But Ted Johnson, the inside linebacker, does. And like the old Mitch Miller show, Dave, follow the bouncing ball. And the Buffs follow it down to the Cyclones' 25-yard line. Cordell Stewart under center at quarterback for the Buffs. And Salam, the Heisman Trophy candidate, gets the first call. And he picks up a couple of yards. Let's look at that CU offense, top to bottom. Cordell Stewart, the senior out of Marrero, Louisiana. And a candidate for all Big A to quarterback. The running back is Rashawn Salam. The tight ends are Fourier and Dennis. And the wide receivers, James Kidd and Michael Westbrook. Kidd filling in for Ray Carruth, who was at a family funeral in California this weekend. And the offensive line, a good one, a stable one, led by Bertie and Stoltenberg. Second and eight. Cordell wants to throw. Complete to the tight end, Fourier. He's down to the 18-yard line, still well short of the first down. The Iowa State defense, they play a 2-5. Two, two defensive linemen, Fleece and Scott. The linebackers are led by Matt Nitsche. And your defensive backs for Iowa State line up this way. Jason Brown, Daryl Hall, Matt Strait, pretty good one, and Cedric Linwood. Early first quarter. Buffs with the ball at the Iowa State 18-yard line. It's third and three. complete the Fourier, but didn't get much out of it. Maybe a yard. Kevin Fulton on the coverage. Boy, made a great catch. But still, you have to wonder when it's third and three as to why you're running a route that will not get you enough yardage for the first down. Christian Fourier, from his wingback position in motion, just went out. You can see that ball. It looked like Cordell Stewart expected him to hook up and Fourier was on his way to the middle of the field. Great adjustment, excellent hands. Brings up fourth down, and the Buffs bring out the field goal team, Neil Voskaritschian. He's eight for 15 on the year so far. He's perfect from inside 40 yards, and this attempt will be from 34 yards. And Neil is still perfect from inside. 40, the Buffs on the board very quickly. After the Iowa State turnover, see you with a three to nothing lead. Neil Voskaritschian puts the buffs on the board with 10.31 to go. The kick down the middle, but we're most interested in the fine catch by Chip, a sliding catch held onto the ball. That's all that matters. <laughs> and back to live action. The kickoff by Voskaritschian deep into the end zone, and Iowa State will down the ball there and start with the ball at its own 20. Hey, Les, why do you laugh? It's tough to catch the ball with fur on your paws. <laughs> You're absolutely oh, right. And a big old head on your <laughs> neck. <laughs> oh. All right, we've got 10.31 to go first quarter. The Buffs lead it 3-0 and Iowa State with the ball. The Cyclones on the verge of their first winless season since 1930. John Doxson and the boys trying to reverse that. On the option, oh. Branch, Matt then on. Wow, what a hit by quarterback Chris Hudson. I'll tell you, a pretty good example as to why wide receivers have to block in the option game. Chris Hudson is on the receiver to the wide side of the field. Branch gets the pitch, and nobody blocks Hudson. But you've got to at least make that cornerback slow down. And you can see standing on the perimeter an Iowa State player that completely let Hudson go. 
Well, we've talked about the Heisman, and we've talked about Ted Johnson being a candidate for the Buckus Award. Chris Hudson is still in the running for the Jim Thorpe Award that goes to the best defensive back in the nation. No gain on the play, brings up second and ten. That pass complete. This is Branch again on the reception. Run out of bounds by Dalton Simmons at the 24. Call it a gain of four. Dalton Simmons playing with a pinched nerve in his neck. Well, as you can tell, not every seat filled at Folsom Field. And that's a, a cause of great consternation for Bill McCartney. He told me last week he is very, very disappointed in the crowds the last couple of games since the loss to Nebraska. He thought there would be better support for his Buffaloes. But basically, the seats that are empty today are seats that normally students sit in. So I, I'm not sure if the student body up here is getting up with this club or not. Third and six. Doxon still on his feet. Short of the first down, however. That'll bring up fourth down. Darius Holland and Shannon Clavell. The bookends at defensive end make the tackle. Well, Doxon's very quick at quarterback, but one thing that's apparent early in this game, if you pressure him even slightly, he wants to pull that ball down and run. Now, he is not a guy that's going to stand in the pocket and go from one receiver to the next. The punter for Iowa State is Mark Harris. He's averaging 42 yards a punt. And back to receive is Chris Hudson. He's leading the Big 8 in punt returns at just over 10 yards a return. A low kick. Hudson will let it bounce. A little too much. This ball is still loose. It looks like Iowa State has the ball. They do at the Buffs 24-yard line. Chris Hudson could not hold on. Very unusual for CU the last few games to let the ball loose like that. Yeah, CU has not had a turnover in the last three games. Although Chris Hudson, as good as he has been in returning punts, he has made his fair share of mistakes as well. That was a case where he just didn't want to let the ball roll any further, tried to pick it up on the run and never did find the handle. There's about 15 guys in that pile. Digging, scraping, trying to pull that ball. Hunter did was wearing a Cardinal and gold jersey. Iowa State with the ball to CU 24. We've got 8.47 to go, first quarter. The Buffs lead it 3-0. This is Troy Davis with the carry. A club star out of Florida, the Florida Player of the Year, but he gets nowhere because he meets up with Darius Holland and Ted Johnson right in the middle there. Brings up second and nine for Iowa State. The Buffs on defense give up an average of 19 points a game. They are very stingy when it comes to the run. They get up just 118 yards per game on the field. Second and nine. Doxon keeps. Squeezed a couple of yards out of that before Greg Jones fell on him. That's a play that we've seen a lot of wishbone, a lot of option attacks put in the last oh, three or four years. And it's especially successful against defensive teams that have great pursuit, that can really run. Quarterback starts one way with the entire option attack and then just stops and cuts back to the weak side. Pretty well played by the CU defense. Brings up third and seven for the Cyclones. They're showing offense with just one running back. And four receivers in the game. They try the middle. Well short of the first down again. But they are in field goal position, and they will bring out their field goal kicker, Ty Stewart. He came into the season... Harold is possibly the best kicker in the Big 8, but he's struggled mightily. He's just 9 for 17 in field goal attempts. A senior out of Omaha. This attempt will be from 35 yards out. And a chance for Iowa State to tie the game. It's not a very good looking kick, but it goes right through the uprights. It wasn't exactly end over end, but it counts just the same. And we have a tie ball game at Folsom halfway through the first quarter. 
We're back at Folsom Field, Iowa State, with a field goal just a few minutes ago to tie up the Buffs 3-3. Three to three. And Iowa State, very odd configuration on the field getting ready to kick off, David. Well, they have uh, tried unsuccessfully a couple of... Actually, one worked and one didn't, onside kicks. They come rushing to the line, but go with the conventional. It's high and not very deep. And Leon Merritt fields it and is brought down immediately at his own 26-yard line. What was that all about? Well, I don't think he meant to kick it quite that short, but you get the ball up in the air that high, the best thing you can do if you're a receiver is signal for a fair catch. Otherwise, you take a pretty good chance of getting a helmet right in the chest looking up for the ball. Cordell Stewart needs just 257 yards, and he'll become the Big 8's all-time leader in total offense. We'll uh, hit you with a little trivia question later in the show. Ask you who it is he's trying to surpass on that all-time list. Meantime, the Buffs at their own 26 with first and 10 in a tie ball game. Rashawn Salon gets it on the left side. He's up to the 32. Call it a game of six. Jason Brown has stopped. Yeah, we've talked so much about him this year, and Rashawn Salam is so impressive for a lot of reasons. But you, if you look at his yardage, and he's 204 yards short of 2,000 yards coming into the game, this year he's only gained 224 yards of that 1,700-plus in the fourth quarter. So this has not been a guy that has put up big numbers after games were over. Well, so many blowouts, and Bill McCartney has put in his freshman to run the ball in the fourth quarter. Christian Fourier makes the catch for the first down. Run out of bounds by Jason Brown at about the 47-yard line. Christian Fourier, another one of those seniors the Buffs are going to miss tremendously out of Northridge, California. All-time leader in receptions for a tight end and very close to becoming the all-time leader for receptions in the Big 8 Conference overall. And Bill McCartney recruited a gem and he recruited Fourier. We expect to go on and have a very nice NFL career. First down for the Buffs, their own 43. Stewart keeps in the option, finds the seam, and gets it down to the Iowa State 40-yard line. Darrell Hall the stop. I tell you, right now, Iowa State is so intent on trying to take Rashawn Salam out of the game that there is just about any other option available. You'll watch and see, no one takes the quarterback. Salam is out there with two folks in white jerseys and an excellent move by Cordell Stewart to pick up the first down. Well, at 13 yards after that last carry to Stewart's total for the season on the ground. This is Salam on the ground and he's down to the Iowa State 40. Tim Sanders the tackle. Last week against Kansas, Rashawn Salam shattered three CU rushing records. Broke the record for rushing yards in a season held by Eric Bieniemy. Touchdowns in a season held by Bobby Anderson. And points in a season, the oldest record of them all, held by Supreme Court Justice Wizard White. Second and seven for the Buffs at Iowa State's 41. Salam again. Good room up the middle. He's trying to find the sideline. He could get into the end zone. Just short before dropping the ball. Let's see where they mark it. Should be right about the one-yard line. A pickup of 40 yards for Rashawn Salam. Now, Iowa State had been playing the wide side with an extra man. And this time, Colorado comes back with a perfect call, the tailback draw, and you can see Salam once he breaks into the secondary. Again, he's 217 pounds, but he's got very good speed for being that big. He just outraces the entire Iowa State secondary, and it's not for Kevin Fulton, the strong safety. Salam is in the end zone. Well, the Buffs will have four shots at getting it in now. It's first and goal at the one. <laughs> Bill McCartney takes Rashawn Salam out for a play or two, and the crowd moves. The two running backs in now are both true freshmen. Leon Merritt, the fullback, and Troutman. And he gets it, and he is in. Marcel Troutman, the freshman out of Naples, Florida, with the first touchdown of the afternoon. I tell you, here's a guy that you're going to hear a lot about in the next three or four years. Herschel Troutman, 
true freshman and a guy that more than likely will be the number one back, at least going into the preseason next year for the Colorado Buffaloes. Had a pretty good year. 215 yards, almost five yards per carry. Reminds you a lot of Eric Bieniemy for a number of reasons, including, including his stature. Oscar Ritchie, the extra point, he's got it. And the Buffs have a 10 to three lead with 4.18 to go, first quarter. We'll be right back. First quarter, Buffs on top, 10 to three over Iowa State. Nobody's been a greater benefactor of Rashawn Salam's great season than that man right there, number 26, the freshman running back, Herschel Troutman. Every time Salam rips off one of those long runs, he comes out for a breather. Troutman comes in and ends up scoring. Iowa State, a reverse on the kickoff, and a penalty flag is down. The play didn't work very well. Iowa State is down at its own 16-yard line. The man running the ball was Artie Garris. But he didn't fool Blake Anderson, who makes the tackle. Let's see what this flag is all about. And it will go against Iowa State for an illegal block. Well, that's a microcosm of Iowa State's season right there, isn't it? Holding on the return team, half the distance, first down. It certainly is, and, and also when you have struggled offensively to put a lot of points on the board, the last thing you want to do against good teams is get backed up inside your 10-yard line. This is an offense that needs to work in a short field. Well, they've got a long way to go right now. Backed up to their own 8-yard line. They're staring 92 yards the other way. Doxon didn't fool anybody on the option, especially Darius Holland. Boy, he's come out strong today. In fact, the whole CU defense has been strong against the rush all game long so far. We've talked about Todd Doxon wanting to run the football. They've probably had five or six option plays so far here in the first quarter, and they have not given the ball to the fullback yet. And so as a defensive lineman, you start to disregard completely the first part of the triple option. The loss of two on that last play brings up second and 12. 3.30 to go, first quarter. Buffs lead at 10 to 3. That time they do go to the fullback. That's Rodney Guggenheim. And he's across the 10 up to the 12 yard line. Gain of 6. Guggenheim is a sophomore out of Kenner, Louisiana. And so far this year, 301 yards rushing for him. Also plays baseball at Iowa State. Maybe he can get a few wins there. Third and five for the Cyclones. They're at their own 13. Doxon. And a man open. The intended receiver was Troy Davis, but the pass was errant, and there's a flag down. Against Iowa State, it's fourth down. They'll have to punt. I don't think they had seven men in the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion on the offense. Penalty decline. So the Buffs looking at possible good field position, maybe very good if Chris Hudson can come up with a decent run back here. State his second time out today Mark Harris and Chris Hudson he's back at his own 47 yard line leading the big eight punt returning however the first punt he fielded today he fumbled away to Iowa State and that resulted in a Cyclones field goal Hudson at his own 50 at the 50 I should say there's a flag down as Chris is inside the 20 inside the 10 and down at the six yard line a couple of flags down back where Hudson fielded the ball at midfield. Mark Harris, the punter, was the man who had to make the tackle to keep Hudson from getting into the end zone. A 42-yard return if it stands, but the Buffs don't think it will. They're already back at 
their own 30, waiting for the ball to be placed. Bill McCartney talking to defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz about something. The Buffs, however, are on offense. Illegal block in the back on the return team. First down. So instead of the good field position we talked about, the Buffs are back at their own 37-yard line. There's Hankwitz going over something with the defense. Talking with linebacker Greg Jones. Meantime, see you at the ball, Cordell Stewart. He's a candidate for one of those postseason awards, the John Unitas Golden Arm Award. That goes to the best senior quarterback in the nation. Cordell to throw. Going deep. A man wide open. It's the tight end. Christian Fourier with the reception down to the Iowa State 27-yard line. Well, I hesitated because you don't usually see Christian down here that far. Well, Cordell Stewart hesitated because he may have thought the same thing. Excellent pass protection, great ball fake to boot, and Christian Fourier probably has as much confidence in his ability to catch the ball with his hands as any player in the country, whether it's a tight end or a wide receiver. A lot of guys right there will try to cradle that football against their body to make certain he turns his hands the opposite way and just snatches it out of the air. A 35-yard play, and the Buffs are down to the Iowa State 26-yard line. This is Salam. He was patient, he found the hole, and he got it down to the 20. Call it a gain of six. Mark Lillibridge the stop. You know, I think you properly described this. Really an excellent job of running and a great job of being patient, allowing those offensive linemen to make the block. Nice kick out block by Irwin. Salam cuts right underneath, gets caught from behind, but you start to develop that kind of patience and confidence the longer you play. A gain of six on that last play for Rashawn, so it's second and four. Salam again. This time he gets the first down, and he's inside the 15. Matt Nitsche the stop. Nitsche had a whale of a game against Nebraska last week, 17 tackles. Same play as Salam took 40 yards earlier this quarter. Just a quick tailback draw. He gets up behind those big offensive linemen, and I tell you what, it's hard to find him, and when you do, he's not a lot of fun to tackle. Six carries for 64 yards so far. It's not a bad average. First down at the Iowa State 13. On the option. Stewart keeps it. And he's down to the 10. A gain of three yards. Angelo Provenza, young man out of Aurora, Colorado's Smoky Hill High School made the tackle. State struggling primarily because it cannot stop anybody on defense. They're giving up 32 points a game. Salam. He's in. The 23rd touchdown for Salam this season. And give him another 10 yards on his race to the Heisman. And the majority of Rashawn Salam's yardage this year have come on this play, either left or right. Just a basic lead, base blocking up front, man on man. Salam hits that crease and is into the end zone. Seven carries for 73 yards so far for Rashawn Salam. Oscar Richian. The extra point is good. And the Buffs now with a 17-3 lead. We have just 15 seconds to go first quarter. You know, you look at Bill McCartney on the sideline, Dave, and this situation brings up the question, if the Buffs are routing Iowa State, does he keep Salam in the ballgame? Yes. 
I think you have to keep him in until he gets to the 2,000-yard mark. And I know that Bill has not played that way this year. I, I think he should be commended for that because we detailed how much yardage through the course of the year Salam has put in the books in the fourth quarter. And it has not been much. But in this case, the last regular season game, I think you have to assure Salam and his team that you're going to give him every opportunity to get that number right there, 2,000 yards. And if he does, I think he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. And it would be the first Heisman Trophy in CU football history. 17-3, the Buffs lead Iowa State. Getting ready for another CU kickoff. They had the ball three times. They scored all three. Back to receive for Iowa State. Jeff Turner and Jahi Arnold. This is Jeff the Rat Turner from his own four-yard line. And he gets it up to the 26. A return of 22. Well, Rashawn Salam will be able to bounce behind some big offensive linemen. He's in there somewhere. He strides right into the end zone. Nice thing about him, he has more than any back I can remember, any great back, been willing to give his offensive line the majority of the credit. Uh, he didn't even want to go to New York for the Heisman presentation if he's one of the candidates. He said he'd rather be back home here with his offensive lineman when the announcement is made. We have a new quarterback in the ball game for Iowa State. It's Jeff St. Clair, a sophomore out of Bettendorf, Iowa. And he will start with the ball when the second quarter starts because that's the end of the first with CU leading 17-3. CU Bucks football on News 4 is brought to you by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealers. By Coors Original. By Kaiser Permanente. By Rider Ranger. By Ank Mardor. By Blackjack Pizza. And by Samsonite. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC TV and the National Broadcasting Company. Any reproduction of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC TV is prohibited. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at Folsom Field. No snow on the ground. And it certainly helped the CU running game. They lead Iowa State 17 to 3. Iowa State and a new quarterback with the ball. That's Jeff St. Clair. They try the middle. Not very successful. Shannon Clavell and Darius Holland on the stop. So I think that's the only way you can approach this defense when you have the kind of offense Iowa State has. They don't have great team speed. Early in the game, as we were talking about, they tried to get everything outside. The quarterback kept the ball or he pitched. The last couple of downs, they've handed it to the fullback and at least attempting to make Colorado respect them between the tackles. You eliminate some of that great team speed by doing so. Third and one on the option. They have the first down, and Branch has a little more. He's up to his own 44. Steve Rosga and Matt Russell on the hit. Let's go down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Yeah, you might have noticed on that play that uh, outside linebacker John Knutson almost stopped Jeff St. Clair in the backfield. John Knutson back this week. Of course, last week he missed the ball game on the road against Kansas, unfortunately, because of the death of his father, who died in an accidental uh, plane crash in Montana. John Knutson back today with the ball club and was in the starting lineup his final game at Folsom Field. Back up to you guys. First down for Iowa State. That time St. Clair hit for a loss by Mr. Knudsen. No gain on the play. See John Knudsen bottom of the screen number 36. Played outside linebacker. He actually played inside when he first came here. He's battled through a number of major injuries. And as uh, Mark McIntosh just got through telling you, a horrible, horrible family tragedy last week. John very close to his father, which makes it even worse. Well, 
I told you no gain, but there was a loss of three on that last play, so it's second and 13. This is Jeff Turner, and he gets it up to his own 49-yard line. Knutson once again the stop. That's three tackles in a row by John Knutson. And he actually will come right to left. You can see he's following the motion back, just scraping down the line of scrimmage. You can see chasing the ball carrier there, Turner. Did an excellent job for an outside linebacker. He ran that thing down the opposite side of the field. Well, you can imagine John running on nothing but adrenaline today. Third and four for Iowa State. They're at midfield. Penalty flag stops the play. I think Iowa State moving just a little bit on the right side of the offensive line. How would Hank Stram say that, Dave? <laughs> I, I don't know how he'd put that one. A little business on the right side? Do a little business on the right side there, Jack. <laughs> Hank's a great guy. And later on, I'll ask you to do your Vince Scully imitation. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't do either well. Oh, no. So you heard it's still third down. Iowa State staring at nine yards to go, however. Just started the second quarter a little bit ago. CU leading Iowa State 17 to 3. Four wide receivers now. And a good pass rush put on. The first man to hit him was Ted Johnson, and St. Clair folded like an old card table. That'll bring up fourth down for the Cyclones, another punting situation. Well, this has been the one troubling aspect of CU's game so far today. Chris Hudson has fumbled one punt return, and he had a nice punt return on the last one, but it was called back by Pell. With the win. Boy, you could tell. Hudson backed up to his own eight. And he is trapped in a corner. And he goes down after the 56 yard punt by Mark Harris. We'll take a break in Boulder. Gorgeous day in Boulder, despite what the weathermen predicted. See you leading Iowa State. 17 to 3. We still expect that snow to come in, but not until late afternoon. There's some first quarter stats for you. Then you can see it's all Colorado. One first down for the Cyclones. 49 yards of total offense. Buffs have 145. And I guess the only thing that the Iowa State wins in that first quarter will be time of possession. Buffs with the ball. First down at their own nine yard line. They try the middle up to the 15. Salam, a gain of six before being stopped by Troy Peterson. Buffs picking up where they left off last week against Kansas, where they racked up 639 total yards. Their second best output of the season. See, that's the kind of run that the offensive line really likes. And there's a lot of backs that won't run up in there like that. Those big guys want it back. They'll run in behind them, and when there's not much, they'll just lower their shoulders and get what they can. He rushes for 80 yards so far. And remember, everybody in this stadium and nationwide looking for 204 yards total. That'll get him to the magical 2,000-yard mark. Salam again. Picks up the first down, and he's at his own 22. Tim Sanders runs him out. Yeah, you see the scoreboard right there. The scoreboard is keeping everybody in the stadium apprised of how many yards Salam carries for on each time he touches the ball. First down at their own 21. Come on out, Come on out. The Buffs with two receivers split left of Cordell Stewart and the tight end Fourier to the right. This goes to James Kidd. Kidd has the first down and a little more. He's up to his own 34. Matt Straight ran him out. James Kidd filling in for Ray Carruth, who's missing the game because of a family funeral. Kind of pattern that I think Cordell Stewart is probably best at. 
you sit somebody down at the perimeter and allow him with his arm strength to simply pick and choose as to where the ball goes. And a lot of times, just get the football there so quickly that he can throw right through people. And James Kidd, maybe the fastest member of the Colorado football team this year. He's down at their own 34. The option, Salah. Across the 40 to the 43. The stop made by Troy Peterson and the linebacker, Tim Sanders. I tell you, he just wears you down. Boy, in big chunks today, too. I mean, all of a sudden, you think you have him stopped. You get him two or three, and then he gets a five, then he gets a 40. Then he comes back with an eight and ten, and he starts physically to impose his will on the defense. You just get tired at this level of hitting this guy. Second and two. The Buffs at their own 42. Cordell with good protection. He had the man open, Michael Westbrook, but Michael couldn't hold on, and you have to wonder if that dislocated finger affected him on that. Well, there's nothing more difficult for a receiver than to try to catch the football when you have an injury to a, to a finger or your hand because you, you invariably try to catch it a little bit differently and protect whatever the injury is. And I think that's exactly right. Michael Westbrook has excellent hands. And that ball was right where it was supposed to be. Michael with 33 catches so far this year. On third and two, looks like Cordell has the first down. He does. So the Buffs with the ball and a first down at their own 45-yard line. We have 9.28 to go, clock winding in the second quarter, and CU leads it 17-3. Very quickly and very methodically running through the Iowa State defense. Salam. Gets it across midfield and down to the Iowa State 46-yard line. Every time he touches the ball, you hear the roar from the crowd. Well, Eric Martin, number 39 here, underestimates Salam's speed. Watch 39, right side of the screen, linebacker will step up unblocked, and then Salam just runs right past it. 11 carries for 104 yards, I think that should read. If it was 140, I'd give him the Heisman right now. <laughs> Second and one. Salam picked up nine yards on that last carry. Stewart looking long. Drops the ball, but it goes out of bounds, and CU will retain it. In fact, he'll get credit for a one-yard pickup on the play. There's a hurt Iowa State cyclone on the field. It's the linebacker, number 42, Mark Lillibridge. And he is hurting. Not the way he wants to go out. He is a senior out of Marion, Iowa. And it is Mark Lillibridge. This is a tough kid. This is a kid who played most of last season with a broken hand. Didn't want to come out of the lineup. A walk-on in 1991. Made the team, stuck with the team, and now he's starting. I, I think he may have been hit by his own man. Looking at one of his knees. Mark Willowbridge now up on his feet, being helped off the field. Not the way you want to remember your final game. What do you remember most about your final game as a CU Buck? <laughs> you <laughs> can't even remember. You can't remember you the game. No, you know, you know what? It, what? What, uh, what strikes me? It, it didn't set in until about the third quarter that that would be the last time that you would actually run out here on the field in front of the home crowd behind the Buffalo. And once it did, that there was a feeling of. 
and almost of sadness because you just expect every Saturday or every other Saturday to run out here and play. When the four years go by and it's done, it kind of hits home. Third and one, Salam gets the first down, goes out of bounds before he's hit. And he's down to the Iowa State, 43. You know, it's even worse. You and I have a, a fine NFL career. How about these kids that, that will play no football after this final game? It's got to be even uh, a worse feeling. Well, I tell you, they, they've got a lot of great memories here, and this team has been successful over the years, and a lot of things they can look back upon very fondly. Salam here again with enough speed to turn the corner, gets the first down, and gets out of bounds. Cordell Stewart, Michael Westbrook, Tony Birdie. There's a lot of guys that have made major contributions here in the last four years. First down at the Iowa State 43 at Salam with a hole up the middle. And he is dragged down at the 35-yard line. Angelo Provenza and Anthony Scott to stop. It's probably been the most successful play so far this afternoon. Just a tailback draw. And if you have a back with great vision, this really allows him to get the football moving toward the line of skirmish while the defenders are coming back at him. And he can pick and choose as to where to dart. And when you run behind that kind of offensive line, chances are you'll be successful. Second and four for the Bucks. And the option, Salam, the first down, inside the 30, down to the 26. Excuse me, Cordell Stewart kept it. Cordell Stewart kept it. The spin option, and again, the offensive line able to get out in front and do a nice job of securing the line of scrimmage. And we've talked about the inability of defenders to tackle Rashawn Salam. Cordell Stewart is not an easy guy to tackle as well. There's a penalty on the play. That ball, first of foul against the offense. 15 yards, and it's going to be first down. So something happened after the play. The run will stand for Cordell Stewart, and it'll be tacked on. Maybe hey, Desmond Dennis, number 89 here. I think you're right. Bill McCartney on the sideline giving him an earful right now. sure he's not done talking to Desmond about it. We'll hear about it a little more when they go over the film during the week. And I believe Desmond Dennis was also called for a personal foul last week, and McCartney wasn't happy then either. First down for the Buffs. They're back at the Iowa State 40. This is Salam trying the middle. He ekes out three yards. Marcus Allen the tackle. Little rough stuff going on at the pileup. Maybe Iowa State trying to get back for that last late hit by Dennis. Kind of odd to say Marcus Allen with the tackle. But that's the name of the kid who plays one of the linebacker spots for Iowa State. Scores from around the country. Air Force looking to win its eighth in a row, but having a tough time at Notre Dame Stadium. Oklahoma State leading 11th ranked Kansas State. Kansas State expecting a bowl bid. Boy, that's a surprise. Yeah. With a half to play. Second and six. Stewart with a lot of time. Hits his man on the sideline. It's Michael Westbrook. And he has first down yardage. Daryl Hall on the coverage. This is a typical great Westbrook catch. Well, I tell you, nice route. Had Cordell Stewart thrown this ball a little bit earlier, I think he would have saved the shot that Westbrook takes. Right now, you got to get him the football. He's standing in the sideline wide open. When he finally does take the uh, take the hit and make the catch, it's enough for the first down. Funny about Michael, when he does dance that sideline, he doesn't just want the one foot in, which is all you need in college. He's practicing for the pros. He gets both feet down inside the line. Salam. A nice crease on the right side. Flags fly. Salam gets the ball inside the 20. And another flag because there's still a wrestling match going on between Christian Fourier and the linebacker B.J. Spikesman right there. Things getting a little testy on the turf. A 
and officials are going to have to talk this one out because many flags flew in many areas of the field. We've got 6.44 to go in the first half, and CU has a 17-3 lead over the winless Iowa State Cyclones, who are playing without their head coach, Jim Walden. He's here watching from a radio booth, but he is not allowed on the sidelines because he's been suspended by the Big 8 for criticizing officials. Looks like we have a decision. A holding call against Iowa State, a personal foul against both teams. <laughs> You take a look, you can see what happened. Left side of your screen, Christian Fourier will get tied up with the linebacker, B.J. Spikesman. Then if you have vertigo oh, here, you don't want to watch this. Offense. Ten yards penalty on the spot of the foul. Dead ball, personal Around. foul against both teams, offset. <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid, you oh. like it when your parents twirl you around like that. Well, when, when, you're 20, when you're 22 years old, though, you get a flag flown for it. Ooh. Some other scores, Ohio State and Michigan. The Buckeyes leading. Ranked Duke losing to North Carolina. It's late in the fourth. And Penn State on its way to a Rose Bowl, trying to finish up the regular season undefeated, and it looks like it will against Gary Barnett's Northwestern team. Miami, supposedly going to the Orange Bowl to play the winner of the Big Eight Conference, either CU or Nebraska. Leading at the half. So after we wallow through all the penalty calls and the skirmishes, we find out the Buffs are sitting with a second and 20 at the Iowa State 32-yard line. James Kidd, complete. Stays on his feet. He finally ran him out. His second catch of the afternoon. Same pattern the kid had his first reception on. The outside receiver just goes down about 10 yards. You can see bottom of the screen just sits down for 160 pounds. Difficult to tackle. Great balance. Now what they're trying to do with him is he's got such great speed. If you give it to him in the flat, let him make a few on his own. If he breaks away like he did there, you never know. He could go all the way. James Kidd, sophomore out of Elk Grove, California. Aerospace engineering student. Wants to be an astronaut. Cordell on the keeper. Down to the 16-yard line. That'll bring up third and about four. Matt Nitsche, the tackle again. I told you earlier, Nitsche with 17 tackles against Nebraska last week. He was designated the conference defensive player of the week. One of the Iowa State coaches, they are being coached by committee today. Jim Walden did not designate a head coach. He said, none of my guys want that kind of pressure. They're worried about where they're going to be working next year also. They just want to get through the final game. This is Salam on third and three. He is short of the first down by about a yard and a half. Tim Sanders stopped him. And now the crowd wants Bill McCartney and the Buffs to go for it. Yeah, I think you have to go for it, too, here. You're 14 points ahead, five and a half to go in the first half, and you need about a yard and a half. But I think you have to go for it. And the Buffs are Leon Merritt, the big freshman fullback, comes into the game. He'll be the blocking back. And if anybody gets this ball but Rashawn Salam, it is the upset of at least the day. It's not the upset of the weekend. We know what that is. That happened in high school ball last night. Meanwhile, the Buffs with fourth and two. Oh, Stewart my. throwing, and the ball is blocked at the line of scrimmage by the linebacker, Matt Nitsche. Well, there's the upset of the well, day. I'll tell you what, if we may second guess for a second, or I will, I think that's a terrible call. I mean, you've got Rashawn Salam and a big, strong fullback. 
honk it up in there and pick up a yard and a half. Now, saying that, the receiver was wide open and the ball was just batted down to the line of scrimmage. And Cordell Stewart has this ball batted down. He's got a receiver by himself standing outside. Michael Westbrook. It was a heck of a play by Nietzsche at the line of scrimmage. With a man on his chest, he still got his left hand up and tipped the ball away. All right, Todd Doxson is back in at quarterback. They've been rotating between him and Jeff St. Clair. Iowa State tries the middle. There's a flag down. Ted Johnson made the stop. The ball carrier was Artie Garris getting his first work of the afternoon. Four forty-five to go, first half. Buffs with a 17-3 lead. Looking to head into the bowl picture. Holding. Ten and one record. On the offense. Half the distance. Still first down. So push Iowa State back, and the Cyclones are now sitting at their own seven. And looking at first and 17. Doxson, very slight of build. He's just six feet tall, 170 pounds. He's not afraid to run it up the gut if he has to. Iowa State regrouping now, going back to the huddle. And the officials converging on the ball. football if you are holding tickets and didn't come to the game because you were afraid of the weather well you still have time to get out here the weather's gorgeous Doxon looking to throw Doxon set and we believe in that pileup Darius Holland is laying on Doxon right now Darius Holland with his third sack of the of the season See, Doxon is just almost too small to be a drop-back passer. He'll go back five steps, stand in the pocket, but it's tough for him to see over those offensive linemen, and especially when you have the pressure, the, the inside pressure that collapses that pocket. And you're a little guy, you get big folks right in your lap. A loss of four on that sack, so it's second and 21, and Iowa State going backwards now at its own four-yard line. And keeps again. Mike Phillips, the linebacker, meets him. Why Phillips has really played well. All year long. Really come on strong. Freshman redshirt out of Marrero, Louisiana. But the defense, I think, is going to be improved next year. They've got a nice core of young players. Mike Phillips is one of them that have had extended playing time and if you're going to be that much better even next year. They'll lose three seniors. That's right. Darius Holland. Ted Johnson. And of course, the uh, all Big 8 quarterback, Chris Hudson. Third and 17. Give us to the fullback. That's Garris, and he's up to his own 13. Well short of the first down, and Iowa State will have to punt once again. I feel like I'm saying that every two minutes. Iowa State has to punt once again. They have had little, very little success on offense this afternoon. Mark Harris. This will be his fourth punt of the first half. Chris Hudson, his fourth punt return of the first half with 2.24 to go. backed up to his own 36 and loses yardage on the return about five yards there is a flag down Mike Linkevich made the stop a 50 yard punt and a five yard loss on the return so altogether Iowa State garnering 55 yards on the exchange Maybe even more after this penalty. Yeah, push the buffs back even further. 
Dave, I think this is Iowa State's best drive of the afternoon. <laughs> it certainly has accounted for a lot of yardage. Okay, they have been very good. The, the punting game, you, you look for some bright spot. Punt coverage and the punter have had a pretty good day. Oh, On the return. First down. Well, there's a timeout on the field with 2.05 to go first half, and we'll take a break, too. 2.05 to go first half. CU has the ball in a 17-3 lead. So far, been somewhat of a stroll through the park for the bus. Cordell Stewart trying to become only the second man in Big 8 history to pass for 2,000 or more yards in three seasons. And now he comes out passing Westbrook. He's got some room. Michael's got great speed. He's across midfield. Still in bounds and run out. Back at the Iowa State 34-yard line. Angelo Provenza finally caught up with him. Well, we've talked about the speed of Rashawn Salam and his size. Here's a big guy that can run, too. Michael Westbrook just on the quick slip screen. This play designed to go almost in the middle of the field, but enough speed to turn it back and then outrun a couple of angles. Westbrook is about 215 pounds and runs 4-4. You don't find many players at any level with that kind of size that have that blazing speed. Does a nice job getting behind his blockers and then just turns it on. That play went for 45 yards. This is Cordell Stewart inside the 30. Gain of five, Provenza the stop, and Michael Westbrook doing it with a sprained foot. Well, Cordell Stewart, with that pass to Westbrook, goes over the mark we talked about. Only two quarterbacks in conference history have accomplished what Cordell just accomplished. I'll tell you now, if Rashawn Salon can get to the 2,000-yard mark himself today, he and Stewart will become only the second tandem in NCAA history to have a 2,000-yard passer and rusher on the same team the same year. Amazing numbers. Second and five. Salam can't hold on. Almost picked off in midair on the first bobble, but the ball hits the ground and incomplete. That's unusual for Rashawn. He comes into the game with very sure hands, 23 pass receptions. Well, he just kind of filters through the line and it turns around, and it looked like that time Rashawn Salam tried to run with that football before he actually had control of it. One thing's apparent, if they're going to get the football to Salam in the running game and get him his 2,000 yards, it's going to be tough to do with the option. Because every time they run the option, Iowa State is conceding yardage to the quarterback but not allowing Cordell Stewart to pitch the ball. Third and five for the Buffs at the Iowa State 29. Salam. Is stopped for no game. Clock winding down, less than a minute to go, and Cordell Stewart is calling for a timeout right now. First timeout used by either team this half. And that stops the clock with 57 seconds to go. Well, we're going to take a break. See you threatening up 17 to 3. Back at Folsom Field, 57 seconds to go first half. Now, CU just called a timeout. That's why we took a break. Then both teams came out, lined up over the ball, and Iowa State immediately called a timeout. Why would they call a timeout on the tail end of a CU timeout, David? Well, they may have seen something they didn't like. They may have had the wrong personnel in the game. Colorado came out with, uh, with three wide receivers, and Iowa State may not have felt like they had the proper defense called. And, 57 seconds to go. You've got you've got timeouts to use. You might as well use them. You can see it's been all Colorado here in the first half. 295 total yards. Cyclones with only 61. And while we do have a break in the action, I want to tell you that Mac and Mac give you a full rundown of the CU attack. Yeah, the Buffs head coach joins our Mark McIntosh every Sunday night at 10:35 for the Bill McCarthy Show. Tomorrow. A full rundown of the highlights from today's game, and we'll also run down the bowl possibilities for CU. That's the Bill McCartney Show, Sunday nights at 1035 on News 4. Your home for the CU Buffs. All right, well, each team, after a timeout call, lines up now at the 28-yard line of Iowa State. Going for it on fourth down again. The ball tipped. 
A replay of the last time CU went for it on fourth down in Iowa State territory. The Buffs try to pass. The ball is knocked down. Cedric Linwood, we believe, got a hand on it. And so Iowa State takes over on downs with 52 seconds to go first half. The Buffs and Bill McCartney came in here huge favorites. Right now with a 14-point lead. Todd Doxson putting his fingers on a cold day. They go to the first man through on the option. And he is racked up by Matt Russell. That was Guggenheim on the carry. Matt Russell, he'll be back next year, just a sophomore out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. And he'll probably meet up with Guggenheim a few more times before their career is over. Guggenheim, just a sophomore. He's an active young guy. Really has a good feel for the running game. He's going to get bigger and stronger as he starts to mature. Two more years of Matt Russell. And a great personality. Always willing to sit down and chat with you. On the option. This is Troy Davis, another pretty good young running back. He gets first down yardage and up across his own 45 to the 47. Johnson and Rosga the stop. Two seconds to go in the first half. This is probably the best play they've had in the first half. The pitch and the nice cut up in the option alley. Davis, the running back. It's pretty good yardage. So what do you do here, Coach Logan? Let the half go. That's what Iowa State chooses to do from midfield. So the Buffs with a 17-3 lead. Let's go down to the field and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. The Buffs go off for the final time here at Folsom Field, the regular season. Looks like their 10th victory well in hand. We're going to have Coach Bill McCartney live right now to talk. We are live, Coach. Defense dominant in the first half. Iowa State only about 64 yards. Yeah, they haven't figured out uh, how to keep the quarterback in the option because of the way we're playing our tackles. The frustrating part is on offense going for it and having two balls batted down when you got receivers open. That's frustrating. Speaking of the option, Iowa State doing a great job. They're like double teaming Salam on the option of forcing Cordell to keep the ball. Well, at times. But uh, uh, the, when you play as wide with as much width as they are, they're trying to protect themselves the option. We should be able to run off tackle a little better than we are. I don't think we're blocking them all that well. All right, Coach, appreciate it. As usual, Mac, never happy at halftime. He always expects perfection out of his boys. They're ahead 17 to 3. Rashawn Salam, 119 yards. Looks like he'll probably get that 204 on the ground in the second half to get that magical 2,000 yards. Les, back up to you. All right, thanks, Mark, and we'll take a break here at Folsom Field, come back with a special halftime guest. All right, let's take a look at some uh, highlights from this first half, uh, a half that found CU in the lead, 17 to 3. Of course, first there's the Rashawn Salam long run that set up the CU touchdown. Man, Salam really... With an excellent first half, we'll have to watch him closely as he approaches the 2,000-yard mark here in the second half. Herschel Troutman benefited from Salam's long run. Salam got a breather, and Troutman got a touchdown. And it's something that you've uh, grown quite familiar with, Christian Fourier making an outstanding catch. Look at those hands. And then Rashawn Salam behind excellent blocking up front skirts his way into the end zone. Buffs didn't score as many points, I'm sure, as they hoped to, but they certainly dominated the first half play. As you can see, CU had 13 first downs to Iowa State's three. 61 yards of total offense for the Cyclones, almost 300 for the Buffs. Each team had a turnover in the time of possession about even. And so many of those yards put up by CU running back Rashawn Salam so far on the afternoon. 17 carries, 123 yards. He's closing in on that magical mark of 2,000. 
Getting ready to kick off for Iowa State is Ty Stewart. And back to receive it for the Buffs. On the left is Herschel Trotman, and on the right, Lyndon Henry, both true freshmen. Another high one from Stewart. This is Troutman from his own 11. Stiff arms his way up to the 20-yard line. A return of nine yards. Mike Linkavich makes the stop. Well, it's the last half of play at Folsom Field for 15 CU seniors. They would love to go out with a win. One of those seniors right there in the middle of the huddle. Quarterback Cordell Stewart, who holds virtually every passing record at CU. And adding on to them, 8 for 12 this afternoon for 135 yards. He's already gone over the 2,000-yard mark for the season. The third season, he's gotten to that figure. This is Salah. Everybody here thought he might break away on that one, but tripping him up at the last second was Tim Sanders. Now he almost got the necessary yardage to get the 2,000 right here. Again, this is the play that they feature in the one-back set, just the, the lead and the strength, and had he, had he broken out of that tackle there, he is off down the sideline. Second and three. up to the 38-yard line and another first down for the Buffs. His third catch of the afternoon. We just talked about all the records that Cordell had. Michael has almost all the receiving records for CU. Most catches, most touchdown catches, most receiving yards. All right, a little trivia for you. Cordell Stewart, now only the second quarterback in Big 8 history to pass for more than 2,000 yards in three different seasons. Who was the other? Sean Salah takes it up the middle. A couple of yards on the play. Tim Sanders the stop. Now, I know you know the answer because you've done your homework for the game. Well, I tell you, I, yes, I have. Iowa State really fired up to try to stop Rashawn Salah. But I mean, you'd think that there's a, a bowl awaiting this team. Tim Sanders makes that tackle and got up all jazzed up. You don't like to have records broken against you, no matter what kind of team you have. Second and seven. Salam again. Fumble. Iowa State with the ball. Iowa State recovers at its own 47. And it looks like the man who recovered is Daryl Hall, the cornerback. Well, Salam has had this problem a little bit this year. He breaks through the crease. The ball just kind of stripped out of his possession and then nobody can find it until Daryl Hall is able to pounce on it. Yeah, he really had that problem significantly earlier in the year. I tell you what, most of his fumbles have come on plays just like that. He doesn't give the ball up when he's really rocked. When somebody will reach in and strip the ball, he's had his share of problems. Doxson keeps it, gets across midfield, down to the CU 47. Call a gain of six. The two middle linebackers, Matt Russell and Ted Johnson, met him. There's Rashawn Salam on the sideline, talking over that fumble with his coaches. We just got word from the Denver Nuggets that starting power forward Lafonso Ellis is out for the season. Lafonso needs surgery on that knee that's been giving him problems. He had a cracked kneecap, suffered right before the season. And they don't like the progress he's making. It hasn't been very good, so they're going to go in, do some surgery, and Fonz is gone for the season. Boy, that is bad news. As good as they've been playing, you've got to think that they need a guy like Lafonz Ellis. There's Rashawn Salam getting a little extra tape on the outside. Gives the ankle support, especially when you play on any kind of synthetic turf. Third and one for Iowa State in CU territory at the 44. And Doxson is hit quickly by Darius Holland. It's going to be close on the first down call. Looks like they might have gotten a pretty good placement. By Darius Holland today, I believe, 
that's the third tackle he's made for either a loss or no gain. And there's a great job there, just fighting off the block of Tim Cohn. It's fourth down. Holland stopped him short of the first, but Iowa State is going for it. It goes to the fullback, Guggenheim, and he's picked up the necessary yardage for the first. Pretty tough to stop a fullback on fourth and short. Again, when you play the 3-4 the defense, the nose tackle covers the center, but both of the linebackers are 3-4, 5 yards off those guards. If you can slip that fullback behind the guard, just a natural crease, at least for a half yard. First down for the Cyclones at the CU 41. Second half just underway. And flags fly before the snap. Dead ball, ball start, on the offense, still first down. Well, McCartney's team trying to get on track. They scored the first time, the first three times they had the ball today, but since then, nothing. And on the Iowa State sideline, coaching by committee, with Jim Walden suspended for this game. First and 15 after the penalty on Iowa State. In the quick slant. This is Horacek. Mike Horacek down to the Buffs 29 yard line, and he has another first down. Dalton Simmons and Steve Rosco coverage. A gain of 16. And probably the best throw that Doxon has made today. Horacek just runs that quick slant. Straight drop back, let it go. You get that receiver in a nice crease. what kind of coverage you get, whether it's the corners up, the safety's deep, a cover two, or any kind of man coverage, that slant is a pretty good pass route. First down at the CU 29-yard line. On the option, they're going to throw it. Guggenheim looking. He's got a man wide open on the sideline. It was Jahi Arnold, and Arnold stepped out of bounds. A gain of nine. Hey, that's an interesting pass the option pass from the tailback. He has two receivers to throw to. There's a receiver running deep that's covered, and Arnold standing all by himself on the sideline is kind of the second outlet. A lot of times you toss that ball to the tailback, and he has one guy to throw to. If he's not open, they say tuck it under your arm and run it. But that time, two receivers. Second down, about a yard and a half to go. Give to the fullback, it's Guggenheim, he's still on his feet and down to the 16-yard line. Another gain of five. This Guggenheim is a tough customer, he's really shown flashes. As a freshman last year, in his first college start, he gained 95 yards on the ground against Oklahoma. And this year, late in the season, he's knocked the senior, Jim Knott, out of the starting fullback position. So Iowa State looking for good things from Rodney Guggenheim, just a sophomore. say the name Guggenheim for three more years. On the option, Doxon. Inside the 15, down to the 14. Call it a gain of one, maybe two. The bookends, Cliff Allen Holland make the tackle. Greg Jones also had a hand in. Okay, Greg Jones really with an excellent play. This looked like Doxon might hit that crease for the option and run to the end zone. Watch number 59 fight off the block of a running back and then close quick and quickly enough that Doxon has to cut back to Johnson and Holland. Here's a guy that's really improved during the course of the year. Big, strong athlete, very mobile. Second and nine. Again, they try the middle. Lukenheim picks up a, another two, maybe three yards. 9.03 to go. Third quarter, CU leading 17 to three. But Iowa State knocking on the door. Ryan 
Olsen getting a talking to from Bill McCartney. He comes out of the game from the nose tackle position, and Beely Mau Mau is in there now. Dotson gets the pitch off with a man wrapping around him, but Troy Davis is stopped by Greg Jones. That'll bring up fourth down. Fourth and about six. We've, we've talked about the speed and quickness of this defense, and again, really tough to run wide, even if it's just in a in a straight toss. This, the option, the pitch a little bit late. Look how many black jerseys around that football. If you're going to beat CU and only one team has, I think you have to run between the tackles and knock, try to knock them off the ball. I don't think you can outrun them on the perimeter. Ty Stewart, a 29-yard field goal attempt. He's got it, his second field goal of the afternoon. And the Cyclones now cut that deficit to 17-6. to six. Iowa State hanging in there. Ty Stewart with another field goal, and the CU lead is down to 17-6. to six. We're about halfway through the third quarter. And we want to mention to you one more time a, a basketball note. The Nuggets, LaFonzo Ellis, last year's starting power forward, is out for the season. His bad knee not progressing to the doctor's liking, so they are going to perform surgery on the Fonz on Tuesday. He is out for the season. This is kind of a different onside kick. And Iowa State, well, there's a penalty flag thrown. Iowa State recovered at its own 49. They got the necessary 10 yards on the kick, and if the penalty is not against Iowa State, the Cyclones will have the ball. It was Mike Horacek, number 88 right there, who grabbed the ball midair. I think that penalty flag is probably going to get picked up and waved off because it did travel 10 yards, and you can catch it in the air. Disregard the flag. The ball was touched beyond the 10 yards. First down. Have you ever seen an onside kick like that in the air? I, I, don't, I don't know that I've seen one quite that short. I've seen him pooch it up in the air and actually go down and recover it, but I don't think I've seen him kick one about 12 yards up in the air that high and, and catch the ball before it hits the ground. Well, it looks like that's the way they intended it to go, like they practiced that. We see him bounce it off the turf quite a bit, but we've never seen one in the air like that. So Iowa State with the ball at its own 49. Down by just 11 to the seventh-ranked CU Buffaloes. This is Horace. He's down to the CU 46. Chris Hudson, the tackle. Ohio State leading Michigan 22 to six. That's a final now. So Michigan will be going to the Holiday Bowl to play the winner of the WAC. Duke. Ranked 24th will probably drop out of the polls after a loss to North Carolina. And Penn State on its way to the Rose Bowl, playing for a possible national championship. The Nittany Lions undefeated after finishing the regular season with a win over Northwestern. Up the middle goes Guggenheim. He pulls his way. He's about a yard short of the first down, making the stop. The two inside linebackers once again, Matt Russell and Ted Johnson. So Michigan will play the winner of the WAC in the Holiday Bowl, and we'll find out if the winner of the WAC is CSU tonight when the Rams play it at Fresno State. Miami leading Temple in the fourth quarter. Miami on its way to the Orange Bowl in all probability. And sometime later in this game, when we get a break in the action, Dave and I will go over the CU Bowl possibilities for you. Third and one at the CU 42-yard line. Up the middle. This is going to be close. Making the stop on the fullback was Darius Holland along with Vili Mamo. Well, let's see where they placed that ball after the Jim Knott carry. Iowa State with a little momentum right now. 6.58 to go, third quarter. They'll bring out the chains and measure it.
first down by literally the nose, the nose of the football. And I'm sure Bill McCartney is not happy at all with the way this third quarter has gone. His offense gives up the football on a turnover, a fumble. Iowa State converts with a field goal. The onside kick works, and all of a sudden, you've got Rashawn Salam and his offensive mates standing on the sideline, your defense on the field a lot. Iowa State with a first down at the CU 41. They stick with the fullback. That's Jim Knott again. Down to the 37. Russell the tackle. Of course, Jim Knott's had his moments against Colorado. A couple of touchdowns last year. Big, strong fullback. It always seems like Iowa State, at least in my memory, has played Colorado pretty tough. Even when Colorado has had very, very good teams the last four or five years. Well, the last year was a perfect example. CU had to pull out a trick play to help him beat Iowa State. 21-16. There's a fumble. Artie Garris couldn't hold on, but it looks like Iowa State recovers. See, I think that's a case in the, in the option attack where the fullback, you teach him not to clamp down on that ball. Quarterback rides in, and the quarterback must be the guy who decides whether the fullback keeps it or whether he pulls it back out. It looked like Garris just decided, hey, I'm going to take it. And Doxon was still trying to pull the football back out of the stomach. You can see the third quarter has been all Iowa State in terms of their offense on the field. And right now, Iowa State looking at third and seven. And racked up back at the 39. It's a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. Greg Jones got in there to stop him. Uh, Greg Jones has really become a big play guy for CU, and the coaching staff knew he would be. Last week against Kansas, eight tackles, two for sacks. He forced a fumble, and he had one play where he threw the ball carrier for a loss. Well, they're going for a very long field goal right here. This attempt by Ty Stewart is 57 yards into the wind. He has yet to make a field goal of 50 yards or more this year. He is 0 for 5 from 50 plus. Iowa State's going to talk things over. They keep the field goal unit on the field. We're going to take a break as they do. Colorado leading Iowa State 17 to 6. Iowa State and Ty Stewart lining up for a 57-yard field goal against the wind. I mentioned he hasn't had much success from this type of distance, but going through the stats during the timeout, we find out last year he hit two from 58 yards. And this one is short and a bit to the left. Ty Stewart not happy with himself, but the odds were stacked against him, not to mention the win. I'll tell you what, that's like swinging a nine iron as hard as you can and knowing that you probably should be hitting about a seven. It doesn't matter how hard you swing it, the ball is just only going to carry so far. That may be about as far as he can kick it. Let's take a look at the end of it. Didn't miss by a whole lot. We'll look at it right after this play. See you with the ball at its own 40-yard line. Pass complete to Salam. Call it a gain of five. Now let's look at that field goal. Attempt, I should say. You'll see the ball drifts a little bit to the left and uh, just at the base, the base of the end zone. Gain of four on that last pass play to Salam brings up second and six. Salam on the ground now. Huge hole created by the offensive line. And Rashawn is down to the ISU 41-yard line. Cedric Linwood the stop. A gain of 14 for Rashawn. And now the answer to that trivia question we threw at you in the first half. Cordell Stewart. 
Threw for 2,000 yards again. Three seasons now doing that for him. Who's the only other Big 8 quarterback to do that? And the answer? Oklahoma State's Mike Gundy. He did it the same year Barry Sanders ran for more than 2,000 yards. That was 1988. We have an injured buff down on the field. And as soon as we... Oh, there we go. Tony Birdie. That's right. The fine left tackle for CU. The stalwart on that offensive line. A senior out of Thornton, Skyview High School. Boy, you hope that he is not seriously hurt. Here's a guy that you obviously want to see play in the ball game, but I think Tony Birdie has an excellent chance to play next year in the National Football League. He certainly has the size. He's 6'6", 280. Knowing how the NFL works, they'll probably put another 10 or 20 pounds on him. He's got a big enough frame. And if you're wondering, so far in the afternoon, Rashawn Salam with 156 yards rushing. Maybe a few more on this drive. See you with the ball. First down at the Iowa State 42. Cordell. Move inside, gets him down to the Iowa State 32. Cedric Lynn with the stop. And again, Iowa State trying to defend the option. Playing wide, taking away the pitch, and you can see the alley that that creates for the quarterback. Cordell Stewart able to pick up a lot of yardage before anybody gets a hand on it. Another first down for CU. Salam. He's inside the 30, down to the 27. Darrell Hall, the tackle. Approaching the three-minute mark in the third quarter. CU leading Iowa State, but not by as much as you might have thought. 17 to 6. CU wanting to go into the ball season with as high a ranking as possible. Right now, they're seventh in the nation in both the coaches' poll and in the Associated Press poll. Tony Birdie being tended to on the sideline. Hopefully, he'll be back this afternoon. This is Stewart. He is upended by Linwood at the 22-yard line. And he is close to a first down, maybe uh, about a half a yard short. Officials time out on the field. They might want to measure this. Yes, they do. They're bringing out the chains. Looks to me like he's about, uh, about a half yard short of the first down. And he is. Boy, you have excellent, excellent sight. Thank you very much something I work on very hard. They're working on Tony Birdie. Very hard right now, too. Looks like an ankle injury, which if there is good news, that usually is much better than any kind of knee injury. And but Dave, that's like the difference between major and minor surgery. It's major it's, if it's happening to you. It's minor if it's happening to somebody else. I think most guys that have ever played would tell you, however, that you would rather have a, an injury to your ankle than me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Third and one. Salam has the first down and more inside the 15. And you can see everybody in the stadium giving it the body English when they see the hole. They want Salam to get that 2,000 yards and the Heisman. And this may have been one of his easiest runs of the day because he kind of locks in right behind some big, big offensive. Look at the push. I mean, he's four or five yards into the secondary. Aaron Wade, who has replaced Tony Birdie, the youngster out of Weaver Ridge High School. Nice push to his left tackle spot. You've got a big back like that that's not being hit until he's four or five yards into the secondary. He's going to make a lot of yardage. First down at the Iowa State 14, and Salam gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Sheldon Napaschik makes the tackle. Young man out of Saskatchewan, Canada. A couple of Canadians in this ballgame. We've got Napaschik for Iowa State, and on the other sideline for CU, Ken Brown, an offensive lineman. 
Beck Brown has been drafted by the Canadian Football League. So he might still have a future, even though he doesn't play much for CU. He might still play in the pros in the CFL. Second and ten. Salam. Hit very hard right beyond the line of scrimmage by linebacker Michael Cooper. Cooper, a young man going to college on an academic scholarship. But you take a look, Rashawn Salam again, the lead, this time to the right side, tries to bounce it back. Lillibridge is there, Cooper as well. And Iowa State right now playing strictly on pride, trying to keep Rashawn Salam under 204 yards. Under 50 seconds to go, third quarter. CU trying to add to its 17 to 6 lead. It's third and nine. Behind you, Cordell Stewart is hit. Well, he didn't hear me, Dave. Mark Lillibridge <laughs> whacks him on the back. I'll tell you, Lillibridge has been active this afternoon. He really has played well. After getting hurt in the first half, too. Had to be taken off the field with help. Neil Voskaritian is in for a field goal attempt. This will be a 29-yard try. Blake Anderson, the holder. It's a chip shot, and it's good for Voskaritian. His second field goal of the afternoon, and see you now with a 20-6 lead. We're very close to the end of the third quarter. Back at Folsom Field, near the end of the third quarter, CU leading Iowa State 20 to 6, and back to receive the kickoff from Mike Slevin will be Jahi Arnold and Troy Davis. This is Davis. Room up the middle. Dangerous kid. He's at midfield. He could go all the way. Troy Davis dives into the end zone. And Iowa State returns the kickoff for a touchdown. Troy Davis, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. Last year, he was the USA Today Florida Player of the Year. He's got great speed, and this may be the only way Iowa State was going to put points up on the board in terms of a touchdown. Nice job blocking. The good job right there by Davis setting up his blockers. Pulls away from a couple of tacklers, and then nobody's going to catch Troy Davis as he scoots into the end zone, error-born style. 90, 98 or 99 yards at official. Now the extra point attempt by Ty Stewart. And we have a ball game, folks. With 17 seconds to go, third quarter, Iowa State within a touchdown of CU. The score is 20 to 13. After that shocker let's talk a little bit about nfl football gary miller's sports extra is the place to be on sundays for a full recap of every broncos game join gary this sunday night at 11:05 for all the highlights and post-game reaction to tomorrow's broncos game against the atlanta falcons it's your extra broncos coverage and it's only available on gary miller's sports extra that's sunday nights at 11:05 on news 4 your home for sports Boy, oh boy, just when you think CU grabs the momentum back, Iowa State right back in the ballgame. And I guarantee you that conversation is about, hey, we're seven points down. We've still got a fourth quarter to play to the seventh-ranked team in the country in their house. We've got a chance, fellas. And that's what teams need when you're completely outmatched. You need to have that spark sometime in the second half, the spark that tells you, hey, we've got a chance if we play. And I know Bill McCartney's not happy at all with how things have gone. You know, Jim Walden might not be on the sideline coaching this team this game, but Jim Walden teams are known for their upsets. Well, they've given Nebraska fits the last few years. They actually beat the Cornhuskers a couple of years ago in Ames. Uh, 
And the Iowa State kickoff. This is James Kidd returning his first on the day. He's up to his own 27-yard line. There's Flags a flag everywhere. down on the field, yeah. Referee Hal Dowden talking it over with his brethren. Step off, personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, that'll push the ball up to the CU 41. That's where the Buffs will start the drive. Now, behind that tinted glass is Iowa State head coach Jim Walden. That might be him on the left there in the tie. Suspended by the Big 8 for this, his final game at Iowa State. I'm going to miss him. One of the more outspoken, colorful characters in all of college sports. He could land somewhere else, but chances are his 17-year head coaching career is over. Rashawn Salam met very quickly by linebacker Marcus Allen. Might have gotten a yard on the play. And that's the end of the third quarter. And CU hanging on to a 20 to 13 lead after Iowa State returns the kickoff for a touchdown. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you, the start of the final quarter at Folsom Field. CU leading Iowa State. 20 to 13. Troy Davis, a freshman for Iowa State, just moments ago returned a touchdown, returned a kickoff, I should say, 99 yards for a touchdown to pull Iowa State within seven. Right now, CU with the ball at its own 43-yard line, ready to start a drive. Cordell Stewart, his final quarter at home in a CU uniform. Throws the ball, bounces it in to Michael Westbrook. Incomplete. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh. Mark. Thank you, Les. On the last series, you know that offensive tackle Tony Verde left the ball game. He's got a ankle sprain on the right leg. It's not a appears to be very serious. He might, in fact, come back in the ball game. But in his place right now, you'll see number 52, Kyle Smith. In at left offensive tackle for Tony Burton. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. Kyle Smith, a sophomore out of Torrington, Wyoming. He was a defensive lineman until spring practice. Shifting him over to the other side of the ball. Third and nine. Throwing again. Bill Savoy makes the catch, and he has a first down in Iowa State territory. Yeah, that, that was a nice catch. Savoy, who has had his moments this year, basically playing behind Michael Westbrook. Long strider, 6'2", and boy, has a nice ability to come up with a big catch. Watch him go down, get both hands underneath the ball, get up, show it to the official, walk back to the huddle. Well done. Kid is well built, one heck of an athlete. He's going to have a lot of good years here at CU if he stays healthy. First down at the Iowa State 45. This is Salam. He's down to the 40. Put another five yards on his college resume. Dave, see you looking like uh, it's playing with a, a greater sense of urgency here. Well, I, I think what's plagued them a lot this afternoon, they obviously want to get that man 2,000 yards. And so that is in the back of their mind when they try to run through their offense. When they throw the ball, they don't want to throw it too much. When Cordell runs it, he doesn't want to keep it too much. You see Salam 173 yards in the day. 27 yards short of that 2,000 yard mark. Second and five. Cordell keeps to the 31 and another first down. Jason Brown made the tackle. I don't know, I've said this a lot today, but Iowa State is just not going to let Cordell Stewart pitch the ball on the option. You can see a nice job outside. Matt Straight, the defensive back, takes Rashawn Salam out of the option attack, and Stewart's able to cut up with some pretty good yardage. 
First down yardage at the 31 of Iowa State. Again, the option to the short side of the field. Stewart, it's about eight yards on it. I've always wondered why coaches call the option to the short side of the field because it seems like everybody is so packed in there that you're not going to gain any yardage. Well, the reason they do it, usually defenses, when you're playing an option team, will stack to the wide side because they expect you to run wide. Therefore, you can get that crease right there. And see, it's an eight-and-a-half-yard gain to the short side of the field. They, they've been very successful doing it to the short side, especially when Cordell Stewart keeps it. Second and three after the pickup of seven by Cordell. This time they go to the wide side of the field, and Cordell successful again. Touchdown. Well, he's been a great player here at CU. He's done a lot of outstanding things. A spin option, and again, nowhere to pitch the ball, but when you're 6'3 and 210 pounds, you just turn it up and hit that soft spot 24 yards later, you're in the end zone. Vasquerich in on for the extra point attempt. He's made all but one this year. And with 13-20 to go, fourth quarter, the CU Buffs jump out front, 27-13. Cordell Stewart just ran it in from 24 yards out. He needs just six yards to become the Big 8's all-time leader in total offense. Oscar Richian squibs it down the middle. And returning it was Jahi Arnold up to the 31-yard line, his own 31. Take a look again at the 24-yard touchdown run by Cordell Stewart just on the option play. Everybody flowing to the outside, and Stewart able to cut back, and once he does, you're not going to catch him. In that case, you're not able to tackle him. Not the keeping tally at home. Rashawn Salam with 173 yards rushing on the afternoon. He needs 31 more to reach that 2,000-yard mark. Meantime, Iowa State with the ball. Doxon looking to throw, looking to throw deep, but overthrows Hirache. The Battle of Unbeatens, Alabama leading Auburn 14 to nothing. Well, Frank Oregon looking to go to the Rose Bowl, leading Oregon State. Third ranked Florida, a team Bill McCartney wouldn't mind playing in the Sugar Bowl, leading Vanderbilt. Kansas State over Oklahoma State, closer game than we anticipated in the third quarter. Second and ten. This pass is complete to Ivory Moon, his first reception on the day, Matt Russell on the coverage. More scores for you. BYU and Utah not at a 10. And Yale over Harvard, 32 13. First down for Iowa State at its own 46. Pass is caught by Branch. They're in CU territory, but about a yard, maybe two short of the first down. Let's go down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Thanks, Les. You guys today have talked a lot about Ted Johnson, and he's a finalist for the Dick Butkus Award. Talking to Ted the other day, he said one of the keys to his success this year is his quickness and agility have improved. For the first time in his senior career, he stayed here in Boulder over the summer and worked with Doc Crease on his conditioning, specifically his footwork. 
trying to get quicker. One of the reasons you've seen him have a successful year, he's able to go sideline to sideline and make tackles this year. Back up to you guys. Well, that last pass was incomplete, not caught by Branch. So that brings up second and ten. Complete to Ed Williams, wide open, down to the CU 20, and brought down finally at the 16. Yeah, this has got to come back, however. It was going to be a screen pass, and they had offensive linemen 15 yards down the field, I think. And there are three penalty flags down. It looked like it was a screen set to the left, and then everybody released. Once that happens, you got to run it. You can't throw it downfield. Roll slightly to the left. There's the screen. Now look at the offensive lineman downfield blocking. Doxon looked like he's going to run it here, then pulls up. And that's got to be the call. I think he saw Darius Holland putting the bull rush on him, and it threw off the timing of the play. It was a 38-yard gain. But it looks like it's coming back. We have 12.25 to go, fourth quarter. Pass up, Ferris. Gets the offense. 15-yard penalty. Still second down. Pass interference. He said with a question okay. mark. All right. We'll go with that. So Iowa State stalling on this drive. Pushed back to its own 31-yard line. That'll bring up second and a long 25 yards. Buffs leading 27-13. Doxon will keep. And the quarterback draw gets him up to the 39-yard line, a gain of eight. Ryan Olson and Ted Johnson attack. Doxon trying to get that left shoulder pad back in his jersey. He is quick. This is a design quarterback draw. And talk about a guy with quick feet. Nice cut there. Not a great thrower, but he is dangerous running the football. Kid's a pretty good baseball player, too. In high school, he was all state as a second baseman. Struggled with his confidence earlier this season. Iowa State came out a heavy favorite over Northern Iowa in its opener and lost, and only scored 14 points in that loss. And Doxon uh, took a few games to regain that confidence. This time, he completes the pass to Branch who lunges to midfield, but still well short of the first down, and flags fly at the end of the play. Looked like some late hits there. That's going to be a late hit on Artie Garris, the running back. <clears throat> and there are late hits, and then there are those that are like several minutes after the play. <laughs> the guys were getting up off the pile when he hit him. Yes, a personal foul against Iowa State. It's costly, but not that costly, because it was going to be fourth down anyway, and Iowa State was going to have to punt. Bill McCartney telling his boys on the field he wants to send Iowa State back. He wants to mark off the yardage. Well, I think what he feels there if you decline it, it's fourth and about six, you know they'll go for it. So you back them up. Make them make a decision. It's about third and 22. That's a dead ball foul anyway, so you don't, even, you don't have to re replay the down. And that brings out Mark Harris to punt the ball for the Cyclones. He's had a busy afternoon. Not as busy this half as he was the first half because Iowa State has been able to muster some offense. Chris Hudson to return. Chris is back at his own 22. Another 
good one by Harris. He's got a good leg. Hudson from his own 19. And that's where he'll stay. So with 11.02 to go, fourth quarter, CU holding on to a 27-13 lead. We'll take a break. Buffs lead in the fourth. Let's go right down to the field now. Mark McIntosh now, Mark. Thank you, Les. The crowd anticipating this will be the series. Everyone waving their 2,000-yard signs for Rashawn Salam. Back to you guys. And here is Salam up the middle to the 33. A gain of 14 for Rashawn before Kevin Fulton brings him down. And there are those signs. They want him to get the 2,000 because they know in past college football history, Every running back that has run for 2,000 yards in a season has won the Heisman Trophy. There have been three of them, and they are Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State, Marcus Allen of Southern Cal, and Mike Rozier of Nebraska. And he's 12 yards away from 2,000 yards. And look at Cordell Stewart trying to quiet the crowd. Salam again. He's going to get it here. He might get a touchdown to the 20. And into the end zone. <laughs> what a way to do it. The whole team is running down to the end zone to pile on her shot salam. <laughs> and the officials are throwing flags as they pile on. And in this case, these are flags that Bill McCartney says, fellas, go ahead and throw. What a great scene. Somewhere near that pile is our Mark McIntosh. Mark? <laughs> Bedlam has broken loose on the field. Everyone celebrating Rashawn Salam going over 2,000 yards. The entire team is down there. Even Tony Birdie, who's got the sprained ankle, he doesn't even have his shoe on. He's walking around with one foot encased in ice. Everyone down there, they're hosting Rashawn Salam on their shoulders. And if anybody cares, the bus has been flagged 15 yards for excessive demonstration. But who cares? Rashawn Salon. Hey, Tony, you got a sprained ankle. What are you doing down there, buddy? I'm trying to get to Rashawn. I can't get to him, man. What a great moment in CU history. It looks like possibly the Buffs have wrapped up their first Heisman Trophy winner. And it's Rashawn Salon. Back to you guys. 259 yards and two touchdowns. And what a dramatic way to go over that 2,000-yard mark. Well, we talked about his ability to get the four and five and six yard runs, the tough yardage inside, but sooner or later, he breaks one off. He hurts you on the outside and he's gonna keep coming. He's like the ever ready battery, never seems to lose energy. He wears you down. Neil Voskarichian on for the extra point attempt. He's got it. And right now, about 45,000 people in the stands are chanting, Heisman, Heisman. You take a look at the run that breaks the 2,000-yard barrier. Excellent blocking. Fourier with a great block. And then, again, we've chronicled his speed. You don't expect the man, 217 pounds, to have that kind of speed. He's out running angles right there. And then just a lot of determination the last four or five yards as Cedric Linwood gets a hand on him but just can't bring him down. Take a look at the offensive line. But from this point on, until he gets inside the 10, nobody can catch him. Linwood, finally with the left hand, just cannot bring him down. And he knows right there that he's done it. And if he doesn't, he's sure right now. What a great, great save. Rashawn Salam, just a junior out of San Diego, California. He's got a big decision to make. Does he come back for that senior year? Only one man in college football history has won the Heisman twice. That man was Archie Griffin out of Ohio State. Well, he's a man. I, th I think I might be getting ahead of myself here. I've already given him the Heisman when, when the vote has yet to come. A 
knuckleball off the foot of Oscar Ritchie and goes out of bounds. The penalty flag comes down. Iowa State can choose to either make CU re-kick or take the ball at its own 35-yard line. Kick out of bounds. Ball will be taken to 50. First down. Because they are penalized now, the unsportsmanlike conduct when the entire CU bench piled on Rashawn Salam. They kick him 15 yards back, thus they take it at midfield. That's running backs coach Ben Gregory, former head coach in Montbello High School in Denver, talking to his prized pupil, Rashawn Salam. Iowa State with the ball at midfield, down by 21 now to the bus. The pitch to Branch is dropped. He falls on it at his own 42, a loss of eight, and give credit on the tackle to John Knutson. Well, you know, Rashawn's been playing it down all year long, but. You can see from that smile on his face, it means a whole lot to him. Last drive didn't take very long. The Buffs now with a 34-13 lead. We've got 9.50 to go, fourth quarter, and counting. Going deep. This is Williams. It's complete, and he's inside the 30. Rosga makes the tackle from his free safety position. Second long pass that Williams has caught on the afternoon, but only the first one that counts because the other was negated by a penalty. Well, Colorado, this play rolls its corners up, and the fade pattern, the ball gets there prior to Steve Rosga. That ball is thrown on time, it's really a tough pattern to stop in that type coverage. First down at the CU 28. This time Branch holds on to the option pitch. It doesn't get very far with it. In fact, you can call that a loss of five. Mike Phillips and John Knutson were there. Dachson on the afternoon, 8 for 11, 97 yards. You, know, you watch this kid play, and you get the impression he knows his limitations. He doesn't try to do too much. He needs to do a little more now, though, down by 21. On second and 14, that pass complete to Branch. He's back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's go back down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Thank you very much, Les. Uh, Matt Russell's been having a good day defensively for the Buffs, and two weeks ago it was kind of funny. After the Oklahoma State game, we were talking to him, and he was saying he was suffering from severe headaches. But we found out that he didn't pump any air into his helmet. These guys' helmets have plastic pockets in them that you pump full of air to protect your head. Well, Matt Russell forgot to do that, so he spent the entire Oklahoma State game banging heads without really any protection inside of his helmet. He's got air today. Back up to you guys. <laughs> That's a typical linebacker is what it is. <laughs> Doxson, the pass, knocked down by Dalton Simmons. There are flags there. Well, Simmons makes a nice play in the slam pattern, knocks the ball down with his right hand. What they call is the left hand behind him. Ed Williams, the receiver, got hooked on that one. Pass interference. Just the defense. Spot foul. First down. So just when you think the life is sucked out of Iowa State. Take a look at the bump and run coverage. He hooks there. You reach in with that close hand. Invariably, the, the other arm is trying to hold on to that receiver. And there are a few defensive backs that can make that play without grabbing. Iowa State with the first down at the bus 15-yard line starting to say just when you think this game is over Iowa State with another nice drive the 
This is Davis, the young man who returned the kickoff 99 yards for the touchdown. He's knocked out at the 11 by Greg Jones. We have a score in on the Air Force Notre Dame game. Late in the fourth, Notre Dame leading the Falcons 35-16. So it looks like the Falcons will go down to defeat. And that will make their record 7-4. Still in the running for a bowl berth. The Copper Bowl in Tucson still interested in their course. Second and seven for Iowa State. Movement on the line. Flags fly. Down. Arnie Romero, the linebackers coach for Iowa State. He's been calling the defensive signals in the absence of Jim Walden, and Barry Wilson has been calling the offensive signals. Well, for Broncos coverage with a different beat, tune in to Broncos beat. Gary Miller is joined by Broncos players Reggie Rivers and Jeff Campbell tonight and every Saturday night at 6.30 right here on News 4. Doxon on second and 12 will keep it. Ooh. He's hit hard at, his own, at the uh, CU 14-yard line by Ted Johnson. He got three yards out of that play. We're about halfway through the final quarter. CU leading 34-13. Into the end zone goes Doxon. There's a penalty. Uh, this is going to be a late hit in the quarterback. Shannon Flavel, it looks like. No receiver anywhere near that pass. Doxon lets this go, tries to get the hook pattern with the movement from left to right. They've got trips, three receivers to the right side. And after he lets this one go, ooh, yes, indeedy. That is a late shot by a big person. With the helmet, too. Rubber the passer, gets the defense, half the distance, cross down. And Shannon Clavel owning up to it. <laughs> I don't think he has any choice, right? <laughs> I think he's saying, they're right, I did hit him late, and I'm sorry about that. Iowa State now at the seven-yard line of senior. First and goal from the seven. The option, Doxon. He is stopped at the six, a gain of one. Ted Johnson the tackle. And Ted Johnson will finish his CU career as the second leading tackler in school history. He only needed four coming into today. He's well past that. The only man ahead of him, Greg Beaker. Now a linebacker with the Los Angeles Raiders. And he's much like Beaker. Very solid, nothing flashy. He's actually bigger, too, than Greg Beaker. That's a big, big inside linebacker. Second and goal from the six. Branch is stopped at the five by John Knutson. Chris Hudson also in on the tackle. And again, the option, the second straight time they've run option this side. Doxon will ride the fullback, then force to pitch and watch John Knutson close with Chris Hudson. Under 5.50 to go, final quarter. I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see the fullback get it once down here. Third and goal from the four. Doxon wants to do it himself. He's close. Let's see what the line judge says.
No signal yet. He's a little bit short. And now we're going to get a measurement on first down yardage. He's about a half yard short of the goal line. No, going for it on fourth down. Doxon makes a nice move here. They're trying to break it all the way back across the grain. When he gets to this point, he turns it straight up. Fourth down, a half yard to pay dirt. Guggenheim, is he in? Yes. Touchdown, Iowa State. Well, I thought the fullback might get it one time down here. Well, one time it counted. You were right. Colorado on a goal line front. But Guggenheim able to power in on that left side. Greg Jones has him by the legs, but not before he crosses the goal line. Ty Stewart in for the extra point. good and Iowa State will not go away see you leading by 14 440 to go Iowa State with a touchdown just a couple of minutes ago to get within 14 points of CU and now the Cyclones are lined up for an onside kick they've tried it once already this afternoon with success Looks like this one will go to the left side of the field, the far side, if you're watching. And the Buffs fall on the ball. Cradling in is the freshman, Herschel Troutman. Rashawn Salam. I think that's a lollipop in his mouth. Let's go down to the field, Mark McIntosh. Yeah, you know, Les, sometimes you forget that these guys are still young men. A reward to Rashawn Salam for going over 2,000 yards. Assistant equipment manager Jimmy Webb presented him with his favorite, a lollipop. Rashawn is enjoying it on the sidelines. Back up to you guys. Well, you can't pay him bonus money in college. Although some colleges have tried in the past. <laughs> On the option, this is Trotman. Rashawn Salam retired for the afternoon, so the freshman Trotman getting the pitch. Now let's talk about bowl possibilities here, David. Bill McCartney has said publicly he wants to play the highest ranked team possible, and he'll go wherever he has to to do that. Right now it looks like the Sugar or the Fiesta to play either Florida or Florida State. You've got to wait and see how the Sugar shakes out the Southeastern Conference when they have their playoff. Alabama, last look leading Auburn, 14-0. Of course, Florida figures in that championship game somewhere. I think either bowl would be really a great reward. Pass complete to Christian Fourier. He's down to the Cyclones 43-yard line. And injured, it looks like. No? Just a little slow getting up. No, he is hobbled. Dave Burton, the trainer, out to take a look at him. And it looks like Christian is going to be finished up for the afternoon also. Well, that's a major limp right there as he comes off the field. And Cordell Stewart just broke another Big 8 record. He is now the all-time leader in total offense. Again, he, uh, he passes Mike Gundy of Oklahoma State on the all-time list. Third and two for the Buffs at the Iowa State 44. Troutman with a great move to get into the open field, and he's down to the Iowa State 26. Well, let's finish that bowl thought right after we see the replay of this, David. Well, again, just a preview of what Colorado fans can hope and expect to see the next few years. 
This guy is going to be an exciting player. Compact, built low to the ground, and yet 190 pounds, so you know he's strong. 5'7", 185. Gain of 18 on that play. First down. Cordell sacked. First sack of the afternoon for Iowa State. Cedric Linwood came up from the free safety position. All right, back to the Bulls now. The most important question would be, would you rather spend Christmas and New Year's in New Orleans at the Sugar or in Tempe at the Fiesta? <laughs> I'd rather spend Christmas here, frankly, but uh, I, I, I think it's, again, a great reward for a team that has had a, had a terrific season. You take a look at Cordell Stewart, got backside pressure. Iowa State in a blitz that time, and nobody to pick up Linwood from behind, but I think either the Sugar or the Fiesta would be a nice way to cap it off. On second and 19, the pass is complete to Chris Anderson. That's Chris's first catch of the year. And they, there may be one of the next big play receivers also. Chris Anderson out of the state of Texas. Big, strong guy, 6'4", 220. From La Laporte, Texas, to be exact, but everybody wanted him last year. Great basketball player in high school also. In fact, he's considering going out for the... Uh, for the Buffs team here, playing for Joe Harrington. Well, that would be great news for Joe. Third and seven. Less than two and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. CU leading by 14. That pass intended for Norm Barnett. Another of the seniors playing his final game at Folsom. Let's go down to the turf now and get an update on the Christian Fourier injury from Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. It appears Christian Fourier is going to be all right. He twisted his right ankle, and he was joking as he came off the field that he just felt that teammate Tony Birdie was lonely over there on the injury table, so he'll come over there and take a seat and watch the rest of the ball game with him. But it appears Christian is going to be okay. Back up to you guys. Thanks, Mark. So it doesn't look like we'll have to worry about Fourier or Birdie not playing in a ball game. On fourth down, Buffs are going for it. Fourth and seven at the Iowa State 23. They should pick it up here. Troutman wide open, has the first down, and more inside the 10. Mark Lillibridge finally brought him down, along with Sheldon Napastic. Well, Iowa State blitzed the last time and sat Cordell Stewart. This time the blitz is seen in time and the swing pass to Herschel Troutman. Cordell Stewart leaves the game and Vance Joseph, which I think is a nice move, gets to finish his career as he started as a quarterback here at CU. That's a wonderful, compassionate move by Bill McCartney. Vance Joseph came here as a very talented option quarterback. And it was about that time, five years ago, that Bill McCartney started going away from the wishbone, going more to a passing offense. And Vance was not a good fit, although he'll tell you otherwise that he was capable of adapting. But he got uh, pushed down on the depth chart. And Vance has not seen a lot of work at quarterback in the last couple of years. Tell you what, though, I, I credit him for hanging in there, for continuing to pursue getting that degree and... and, and this is a guy that can really play and has not had much of a chance to play the last couple of years. He's not been a problem in the uh, clubhouse, so to speak. He's still one of the leaders of this team. Vance keeps it. Or gain of three. Hey, how can you forget what Vance Joseph did in place of Darian Hagan at Oklahoma State about four years ago? He had us ooing and eyeing all day long. Yeah, I remember Vance Joseph replacing Cordell Stewart last year against Miami couple of series and I think engineering one nice long touchdown drive great kid too friendly kid walked by him on the team plane he's always one of the first to say hey how you doing Herschel Troutman in for the touchdown <laughs> he, he's going to be dangerous he's got all the signs of greatness well, he knows where the end zone is, doesn't he? Well, he, you, you line him up in the I formation. I think maybe next year you'll see Colorado in this set a little bit more with the fullback. Look at that vision. Cut back. And, and they're doing a good job up front. But Ben Gregory's happy that Herschel Troutman has 
three more years after this. The extra point is good. And CU ups its lead to 41-20 with just 103 to go in the game. Boy, Troutman is a little package of dynamite. Five foot seven, 185 pounds, and solid as a rock. Hits those holes quickly, quickly, and knows how to get to the end zone. He's got two more touchdowns today, eight on the year. And that's a kid that has not gotten a lot of work. Not when Rashawn Salam is playing in front of you. If you're joining us late, by the way, Rashawn Salam has gone well over the 2,000-yard mark in rushing for the season. And in history, anybody who goes over 2,000 yards rushing has won the Heisman every time. He has 2,055 yards for the year. Right after this kickoff from CU, we're going to update you on a basketball situation, the fact that Nuggets starting forward, LaFonso Ellis is out for the season, and we'll hear from the Fonz right after this kickoff. That's Troy Davis from two yards deep. Ooh. He's hit hard at the 20, stays on his feet to the 23. All right, once again, Nuggets forward, LaFonso Ellis, who cracked the kneecap right before training camp started was making progress earlier this week said his knee felt better but the doctors say they don't like the progress and they have said that lafonso will now undergo surgery on tuesday let's hear what Fonz had to say in a news conference this afternoon we feel things are going to go well dr trainer i have 100 percent confidence in him with the operation and of course with the recovery with jim gillen he's been just wonderful for me ever since i've joined the organization so i'm looking forward to it on tuesday sounds like a game Fon's putting a little positive spin on it, saying he's looking forward to the surgery on Tuesday. But he is the optimistic sort. And uh, knowing Fonz, he won't let this get him down too much. He's still a young man, still has a lot of good basketball playing days ahead of him. And he can always come to work for us. He did the sports for us last night at 10 o'clock. He, he wants to stay sharp. We'll let him do that a few more times. Stay busy. Question is, can you play basketball? <laughs> First down, Iowa State at its own 33. Over the middle, Ed Williams, a nice reception. And he's down to the CU 48 yard line. Eric Mitchell now in the game at corner, and he made the tackle. Second reception for Williams on the day. 42 seconds to go in the game. with us here because once the game ends we're going to try and get Rashawn Salam down on the field to talk with us about the possibility of a Heisman Trophy. That pass intended for Kristen Ramey. Incomplete. There are 900 plus voters for the Heisman nationwide. And they'll see the numbers that Rashawn put up today. And they're going to be hard-pressed to vote for anybody else. The other candidates for the trophy, you have to consider Penn State quarterback Kerry Collins a candidate, as well as Penn State running back Kajana Carter. And a lot of people think uh, the kid McNair, the quarterback from Alcorn State, should get a few votes. Incomplete. But I don't think there's any doubt now, after his performance this afternoon, that Rashawn Salam deserves that special piece of hardware. <laughs> 259 yards and two touchdowns. He leads the nation in rushing. He leads the nation in scoring. He leads the nation in total offense. Williams again and out of bounds. Just prolonging the agony is Iowa State. 25 seconds to go. They're down by 21. Iowa State will finish the season without a win. A final record of 0-10-1. CU will finish the season 
almost just the opposite. Overall, 10 and 1 in conference, 6 and 1. And praying, hoping, pleading for Oklahoma to beat Nebraska this coming Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Because if that happens, if CU ends up in a tie with Nebraska in the Big Eight, that pass complete. If the two teams end up tied for the conference lead with six and one records, then the Big Eight committee, the Big Eight Orange Bowl committee, I should say, gets to choose which team it wants in the Orange Bowl. And CU could end up playing in the Orange and playing for a national title. In the meantime, representatives from the Fiesta and Sugar Bowl are here today scouting CU. The Fiesta wants the Buffs badly. Very attractive team. Fiesta folks hoping that CU would bring a lot of fans down to Tempe, Arizona, as they did two years ago when the Buffs played Syracuse. There are some of the people that brought you the sights and sounds from CU football and Broncos football all year long. They do a great job. Eighteen seconds to go. That's Jeff St. Clair in a quarterback now, and that pass is complete. Twelve seconds left on the clock. And the officials will stop the clock because Iowa State has called a timeout. Iowa State sitting with the ball at the 18-yard line. Bill McCartney just wants it to end. But the problem is Iowa State, with Jim Walden resigning after this game, all the assistant coaches will have to seek employment elsewhere. They don't want it to end. They want to milk this thing as long as they can and try to score the final touchdown of their career at Iowa State. Well, one of the men being mentioned for the Iowa State head coaching job is assistant head coach at CU, Bob Simmons. Bob Simmons is a heck of a coach. I, I like him. He's a guy that uh, has been involved in college football for a long, long time. He coached several positions at the Division I level. First down at the Buffs 18. From behind, that's Phillips on the sack. Mike Phillips. Five seconds left. For Phillips, he has four and a half sacks this season. Well, do we look for Iowa State to throw it into the end zone? One last hurrah? I would think so. They've used all three timeouts in the last 40 seconds. Well, David, it's been a wonderful year doing the football games with you again. First the Broncos exhibition games and now the CU games. I've enjoyed it, Les. It's hard to beat when you call in the games for a team that goes 9 and 2, 10 and 1 every year. Makes it a lot of fun. And possibly a Heisman Trophy winning season. St. Clair going to the end zone. Oh, did John Knutson lay a hit on him? And a fumble. Iowa State recovers it, but the game is over. John Knutson ending the regular season with an exclamation mark here at Folsom Field. All right, let's go right down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Sean Salam receiving congratulations from the Cyclones from his own sideline. 
from everybody in the stadium before the day is over. I'm sure a lot of the uh, fans are pouring out of the stands right now. I'm, I'll bet they're looking for Rashawn also. Now we've got Mark McIntosh down on the field. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. We are trying to get to Rashawn Salam. He's coming our way right now. And here comes Rashawn Salam. Let me throw it here to you guys. Stop. <laughs> Rashawn Salam. Rashawn, we are live. Rashawn, only four men have gone over 2,000 yards in a season. You're the fourth. The other three have won the Heisman Trophy. Do you deserve the Heisman Trophy this year? I don't say I deserve it. I say we all deserve it because we all work hard for this. The coaches call the right players for their guys in the right formation. We all earn this victory. Before this season, did you ever think you had a chance for 2,000 yards? No. I was for 1,500, so it's a blessing in disguise. All right. Rashawn, congratulations. I'll let you try to get out of here. Les, I don't know if you can hear us. It's crazy down here on the field. Everyone's celebrating with Rashawn Salon. Everyone expecting him to win the Heisman Trophy. And we're going to throw it back up to you because it's getting crazy. All right, Mark, don't get hurt down there. There are quite a few fans on the field, a couple thousand of them. All celebrating a 10 and one season, all celebrating a possible Heisman Trophy. A few other awards going to be handed out in the next couple of weeks, and there's some strong CU candidates in the running for those awards. So the regular season wraps up with a CU win over the Iowa State Cyclones. We'll come right back. Finish up. Well, the goalpost just came down at Folsom Field. The fans celebrating a win over Iowa State, and, and Dave celebrating quite a few other things as well, aren't they? Yeah, really, when you uh, you take everything into consideration, it's been an excellent year here. I know folks were disappointed, as was the team and staff, with, with the Nebraska loss. But uh, when you go through a, a season like this with the schedule they had and lose one football game, you've got a lot to be proud of. Cordell Stewart sets the mark for the all-time uh, career yardage leader in Big A history. And Rashawn Salam is over 2,000 yards for the season and probably the Heisman Trophy winner. So a lot to be happy for, a lot to be proud of here in Boulder today. Boy, so many great careers ended today. So many great college careers. Tony Purdy, All-American candidate on the offensive line. Christian Fourier, the best tight end in CU history, certainly, for the fans. They're in midfield with the goalposts now. And you need to see what's going on at the other goalposts. Security has surrounded it. But I think the fans are happy with just the one from the north end of the field. Well, what a season it's been. A record-setting season in so many ways. So many firsts for the Buffs. With one game left to play. Because CU will be on the field January 2nd in either the Sugar or the Fiesta with an outside chance at playing in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day. Well, Dave, again, Thanks for another great season. I want to wish you good luck in the high school football playoffs. Thanks. Sir. And we'll see you again next year. The final score from Folsom Field, CU 41, Iowa State 20. And as we sign off, we'll show you Rashawn Salam's record-setting run. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game, produced by Terry Trevano and directed by Tom Richards. Our chief engineer is John Bates, and today's engineer in charge, Doug Houston. I'd like to thank our stat man all year, Ray Friedman, and my spotter, Eric Danner. We'll be back two weeks from today to bring you the Colorado State High School Football 5A Championships live right here on News 4. So for Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh and all the rest who helped us put on these telecasts this year, this is Les Shapiro saying so long from Folsom Field in Boulder.